we're ready, ready to move past the stale ideas and faded names of the past. And we are more than ready for a new generation to lead us into the future. We won't win the fight for the 21st century if we keep trusting politicians from the 20th century. America is not past our prime. It's just that our politicians are past theirs. Welcome back into Wake Up America. The 2024 presidential field beginning to take shape. Boy, it is early. Still, former South Carolina governor and U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley making her White House bid official, becoming the second Republican to officially declare she joins former President Donald Trump as the only two candidates right now in the race. Joining me now for more on this, former Deputy Press Secretary at the White House, Hogan Gidley. Hogan, great to have you back on. Um, so yesterday we got the formal announcement in Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, she didn't mention Donald Trump directly in her speech. She did talk about Joe Biden quite a bit. Uh, but she called out the fact that um, we need a new generation of leaders in the White House. To me, that was a shot at Donald Trump more than Joe Biden. How did you take her speech yesterday? Well, I guess it could be. She did mention Donald Trump in the sense that she talked about working at the U.N., which, of course, is a position that was given to her by former President Trump. Look, I know she's talking about we need new new blood, new generation of politicians, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, Donald Trump's only been a politician for four years, four or five years now at this point. Nikki Haley was governor 20 years ago. So she's been around for quite some time. That's kind of a stale argument. Um, I do think some of the things she injects into the party will be excitement. Um, I do think that a lot of people will gravitate toward a, a, a woman and uh, someone who is of Indian descent as well is kind of checking some intersectional boxes if they believe in that sort of thing. But I think the main the main question here is who's best suited to lead, the, to lead this country forward. Donald Trump has a record of doing that. Nikki Haley can talk about it in the abstract. In fact, some of the things she mentioned in that speech, quite frankly, Rob, are things Donald Trump already accomplished. So she's hearkening hmm. back to a time that was good when Donald Trump was, in fact, president of the United States. So it's kind of a weird dynamic here. I spoke to a lot of people on the ground in South Carolina. Most of the people I spoke with kind of gave a collective sigh, a meh, if you will. Right. Like, we like Nikki, but I don't think so this time. So we'll wait to see what happens. Uh, you wouldn't count anyone out being at 2% or 1% at this point in time because, of course, I work for Rick Santorum and Mike Huckabee, Huckabee both of whom were never heard of until they ran for president and then almost won the thing coming in second both times. So uh, lastly, I just point out the fact that the polling in the state of South Carolina is most important. You want to win a primary state. And right now she's somewhere in fourth or fifth behind Mike Pence, behind DeSantis, obviously behind Donald Trump, uh, and behind Tim Scott, someone who is looking to run as well, who already has the campaign apparatus in place to make a run statewide in, in the Palmetto State because he just ran and won for Senate. Yeah, and I think it does. It makes a difference too. Uh, you know, her being a woman, we have about 20 seconds, Hogan. Do you think she can get the women voters? Because we saw the, the Republicans lost some women voters after the Supreme Court ruling in the summer. Yeah, look, I, I think it's a little misnomer to say women vote for women. Uh, not that they don't, but look, women uh, on the Republican side support the best person for the job. There've been a lot of women who've lost congressional races to men because women voted for the man and not the woman. It's not a gender. Uh, you know, commentary. It's the fact that some people want and prefer a different candidate over another candidate. Gender rarely uh, plays a part in that at all. Yeah, I didn't like the identity politics in yeah. her speech yesterday. Look, if she was a Democrat, she'd be one of the most popular politicians in America. But she, right. she's a Republican, right. and, and I think we're, we're done with identity politics. How about we elect the best person for the job and, and not people right. based on immutable characteristics, all right? Things we're born with that we can't control. Hogan Gilly, good to see you as always, my friend. We'll do it again soon. Thank you.